Hi, I'm Mike with House on the Mend, and in episode seven of our ongoing series, Refurbishing This House in Bullhead City, Arizona, we are gonna be transforming bathrooms. So let's get started. If you break it, he will fix it. If you buy it, he will build it. House on the Mend. Well, we're standing here in the guest bathroom, and as you can see here over the last couple of days, I've taped everything off and then painted it uh, from that kind of blotchy blue and white sponge pattern to just a plain, nice, clean white color. And if uh, the next person that owns this house wants to paint over it, it'll be pretty easy for them. The fan with the light uh, that goes over the shower and the toilet area has been taken down and painted and we're going to put that back i'll show you that in a second i also took out the medicine cabinet the inside of it is uh, metal and it's almond color so i want to paint that and we have the sink in here now unlike the master bathroom well, that i'm going to show you in a minute this sink is relatively okay it's white tile which is kind of aged uh, but i'm going to leave that i'm going to leave the actual sink itself and maybe clean up the faucet or change it. But the real problem is the grout. As you can see here, the grout is pretty nasty. There's a lot of missing spots. It's uh, kind of browning and, and looks gross. We're going to take a uh, attachment to my little multi-tool and we're going to grind out that. And then I also have a little hand tool that'll come in after the fact for the spots I can't get to. And we're going to put fresh grout in that. The final thing in here is this tub surround First of all, the doors need to be deep cleaned. They're heavily oxidized. And uh, then the fiberglass surround is in good shape, but it's an almondy color. And I don't think that really goes with anything in the house. So we need to find a good uh, quality paint that we can put over that and kind of resurface it, both in this bathroom and in the master bathroom shower. And speaking of the master bathroom, let's go in there next. So overall, this master bathroom is really not too bad. There are uh, two areas uh, that need serious focus. Uh, number one is this sink. It is shockingly made out of plywood and uh, not surprisingly at all, it is uh, wearing away and like rotting away. So uh, I'm gonna start by taking out uh, this sink basin today and we're going to put a new uh, countertop in uh, close to as as bad looking is the shower um, there's some peeling up top that we're going to need to take care of the door has a ton of calcium and lime deposits on it the inside of the shower pan is really dirty it's going to need some industrial strength cleaning and then right next to the shower is the bathtub and the bathtub, uh, as you might remember from the first walkthrough video, is all clad in oak uh, with raised paneling. And that's really not smart in my opinion when you're uh, in constant contact with water. So the first thing I want to start with is the tear out of this sink countertop. So to do that, I'm going to need to remove um, both of the uh, sinks themselves along with the countertop. As I looked underneath, it looks like these are epoxied in, but they're in fairly good shape. They just need to be cleaned up. So I'm hoping I'll be able to get them out uh, and reuse them. These faucets, on the other hand, are a total goner. They are completely corroded and I'm just gonna replace them. So the water is shut off uh, underneath and now I'm going to get up and I'm going to disconnect the uh, cold and hot from each of the faucets and leave those uh, hoses in place because they seem to be in okay shape and then I'm going to disconnect the uh, sink it themselves from the p-trap and once we do that we can start prying off all this wood some of which is actually falling off and we're going to uh, take off the backsplash and the countertop itself and get that area ready for a new laminate countertop. All right, since I'm gonna be under and there could be debris falling, I'm gonna have my uh, safety glasses on. I've got this a little bowl that I keep in my plumbing bucket that I'm gonna put right underneath the hoses 
to catch any water and then I'll quickly wipe it up so we're not wetting, wetting the um, inside of the cabinet. I've got this awesome uh, rigid plumbing tool. You can buy them at Home Depot. I'll leave a link to them, but it's got all kinds of uh, little wrenches and things on it. And then you can set it into this uh, handheld guy that gives you a little bit more leverage. So I really like this tool and I use it all the time with uh, changing out plumbing fittings and faucets and all that. So I'm going to take advantage of it right now. All right, from plumbing mode, uh, now to d mode. Let's get this true piece off and we're gonna do these backsplash. you but I'm not a fan of these lights. Um, for one it's kind of an old look for sure but also every one of these is an incandescent light bulb so when you're here in the morning getting ready putting your makeup on uh, especially in a hot climate like we have here in Arizona uh, this is just hurling heat at you so I'm going to take this light uh, fixture out and I'm going to replace it with something more contemporary but it also is LED. Well, we should probably sand all this wood down before we prime it, but I think even before I do that, I'm going to scrub it down with some TSP. There's quite a bit of soap scum and grime that's in some of these corners and stuff. I want to get all that off first. And then also once that water-based uh, washing compound dries, it'll raise any of these little fibers up, which makes sanding more effective as well. So let's do that. I'm going to take this cover off here so that we don't have to deal with it when we're washing, sanding, and painting. Man, this Scotch Blue by 3M really doesn't come off very easy. There's torn little bits of tape everywhere on all different kinds of surfaces, the mirrors and the shower. Let me know in the comments if you know a better tape brand. Jeez. So I really like the way this paint color is turning out here in the bathrooms. And I think it's going to look great in the kitchen as well. And I'm going to wait to do the drawer fronts and the cabinet doors uh, until we start on the kitchen and we'll do a one big batch. So today I'm going to turn my attention on the two showers. In each, there's one in each bathroom. And they're fiberglass surrounds. And they're an almond color. They're really dirty and soap scummy. And your first inclination when you see them is just to yank the whole thing out, which is really expensive and replace it with something brand new. However, Rust-Oleum makes a great marine product called Topside. 
and they have a primer that goes along with it called Above the Waterline. And if you look at this video right here by the DIY Power Couple, they do a great job uh, of just doing a DIY uh, refinishing of a fiberglass surround. So I encourage you to watch that video if you're interested in that. I'll put links to the products I'm going to use. I'm going to give you an overall of what we're doing, but they did a great job. So we're going to take the doors off so that we have just the fiberglass around. Then we're going to wash down uh, the walls to get all the soap scum off first so that when we sand, we're not just ingraining all that soap scum and whatever else is on the walls and the floor pan into that fiberglass. And then, uh, then we're going to sand, wipe everything, vacuum everything down uh, with the tack cloth and the mineral spirits, and we'll be ready to roll on the primer and then the paint. And I think it's going to look fantastic. So here we go. Well, it's a new day. In fact, it's been a couple and this primer is fully dried and cured. It's really smooth, very pretty. So happy with how it looks so far. I'm interested to see what the uh, top coat is going to look like. But before we put that on, we need to sand and then according to the instructions, solvent clean. So wipe down with mineral spirits and a rag. And then we're going to stir up this uh, Rust-Oleum topside paint and we're going to get to applying it. Gonna need all the windows open for this one, I think. So let's get going. Well, between the fumes and all of the prep work, this was quite an arduous task to refinish both the shower surround and this tub surround, but the outcome was beyond my expectations. This finish is beautiful and glass smooth. Now there is a bit of texture that I can see with the eye, but it is very pleasing to me. I don't mind it. It doesn't look like some raw texture that you would get on a wall with a big nap brush. It looks really good. So the next step is to very carefully take a razor blade and cut around all this tape where the tape meets the paint. So I don't have any issues with the tape peeling off a bit of this finish because it's so much work to even do a little bit of touch up, right? Once that's done, then I bought a new shower head, a new tub spout, a new drain plug, and a new overflow. So they'll all be nice and fresh looking. I still need to clean the doors uh, to get them all nice looking, and then those can go in. Next, let's work on the new laminate countertop for the master bathroom. So I went to uh, Home Depot actually and bought this one and uh, two side pieces that'll dress the sides. It already comes with a backsplash on it. So the next thing I want to do is mark out where we're going to cut out for the sinks. And that's why I'm so happy that we kept this old piece of countertop as a template. So I'm going to slide this up here onto these two pieces so we get a good even position and now I'm going to take a pencil and just scribe around the cutouts. I'm gonna hold down this countertop with pocket hole joinery. So I've got my little pocket hole jig right here. I'm gonna put uh, four pocket holes in each of the sink basins because it'll be really easy to get under there once we set the countertop in place.
So the manufacturing stamp on the bottom of these two sinks says February of 1984. Uh, other than them being dirty, they're in great shape. We're going to use them again. We do need to do a couple things, however. When they were installed on that plywood uh, piece of countertop, uh, they have a bunch of glue on them that I'm going to need to take one of these five-in-one tools and scrape all that glue off so that we can get a good mount. I'm also going to clean them up with some CLR. Uh, this one's going to be a little bit more lengthy. We've got plywood that actually ripped up when I removed it uh, that has to be removed, meaning that this glue is holding on a little bit more than this stuff. And then this drain uh, is so corroded I couldn't just unscrew it, so I'm going to have to take a reciprocating saw and cut it off. I have two new drains, so that's no problem. So when it comes time to dressing up plain flat mirrors on a bathroom wall, I always recommend mirror mate frames. Uh, I'll show you what they are right now. Now I'm not sponsored by them, I just think it's a great product. All right, we've got the master bathroom and we've got the guest bathroom, which is a smaller one. So let's start with the guest one. Now this is the sum total of the parts besides the frame pieces themselves. And it's just these little brackets that connect them together and a little bit of white glue. So they make it real easy for you. The top and the bottom are marked out so that you, when you lay it out, you know right where everything goes. So let's just take a little bit of the supplied glue on each of these corners. And then we're going to put these little white brackets in. And just like that, we have a frame. So I'm going to just wipe down the uh, little bit of glue that's coming out of the edges and we'll be ready to bring it into the bathroom. So in a bathroom or kitchen, the code generally states when you're within six feet of a sink that the outlet should be a GFCI. Now this house is grandfathered into the code of the, that existed at the time it was built, but I think it's a good safe practice, so I'm going to replace this one with this 15 amp GFCI. 
Now here in the master bathroom, they've already switched out this plug for a GFI. And I'm testing to see if the one you can see in the reflection here on the other side of the vanity is connected to it. And I do that by pressing on the test button and you see the lights going off and back on. That means these two were connected. Well, what a difference. This entire bathroom looks updated, clean, and beautiful. I absolutely love how the countertop turned out. We were able to reuse the sinks, and then we put brand new faucets in that are nice and clean. This new lighting up above is updated, fresh, very nice white light, and I love the surround around the mirror, it really sets off and brings out the colors of the countertop. The shower looks brand new like it was never used. The door is clean and pristine as you could get it from all those years of use. And finally, the bathtub. While it's not a complete rehab, it is clean, painted, completely serviceable, and looks like something anyone would be happy to get into. And here in the guest bathroom, by far the biggest difference is a nice clean white paint job getting rid of that blue speckly paint. I also like the way the painting of the vanity turned out. The regrouting of the countertop is such a clean, nice look. The surround around the mirror is a nice touch, fresh lighting. The exhaust fan is nice and pristine white, no longer that yellowed plastic. And then I, once again, the bathtub surround with that fresh redo of the fiberglass paint makes it look brand new. So if you found this video helpful, will you please give it a thumbs up? It really helps the algorithms to start suggesting it to more users like you. Also, please consider subscribing. I'm working really hard to put out good quality content and there's more videos to come. I'm gonna leave a link for all those individual things that we talked about in this video. Full disclosure, those are Amazon affiliate links. So if you click on them and end up making a purchase, it won't cost you a thing, but I do get a small reward at the end of the month. It helps to justify the extra time it takes to set up cameras when doing this amount of work. Until next time, thank you for watching. Boom.